there are a few things that scream Monopoly as clearly as Chrome's dominance in the browser market. And since the top 4 browsers have more than 90% of the market combined, launching a new browser is most likely an idealistic project with all odds stacked against it. But somehow, despite the competition, Brave just passed 100 million monthly active users and for reasons which will probably surprise you. Brave was launched back in 2016 and it was backed by Brendan Eich who, among other things, invented an obscure little language we know these days as JavaScript. The browser promised a faster browsing experience, privacy by default and a chance to get paid for seeing ads. Technically, Brave is still Chromium under the hood, so performance-wise, it's what Chrome could be if Chrome stopped spying on you long enough to load a page. Brave blocks ads, trackers, telemetry and cookies directly at the browser level using its built-in shields. The result is a browser that's up to three times faster because it isn't wasting CPU cycles on someone else's analytics. And to be honest, as developers, that's the uncomfortable part. Most of the stuff Brave strips away is what the modern web is built on, ranging from Google Analytics to Metapixels or any other script we temporarily add in to measure engagement. Brave's success exposes just how bloated the average site has become. Brave Search is another example of that philosophy. It's one of only three independent search indexes left in the Western world, the other two being Google Search and Microsoft Bing. This might sound wrong, but everyone else, including DuckDuckGo, relies on one of those. Brave actually crawls the web itself and it's now serving 20 billion queries per year. That's a huge deal from an engineering standpoint. Building and maintaining your own search index is insanely expensive and Brave does it without tracking users, without query profiling and without data resale. The index is also open for developers, so you can hit the Brave Search API to power retrieval augmented generation, build chatbots or AI search tools. It's already being used as a real-time data source for some large language models because unlike OpenAI's browser plugins, Brave can serve real, fresh web content without leaking user data. So Brave treats privacy as an architectural constraint and this is a huge appeal in this day and age. Their analytics system, called P3A, doesn't even collect user data in the first place. All metrics are aggregated and anonymized through open source mechanisms. When Brave says can't be evil, they mean it literally, at least for now. Of course, we've seen how quickly things change when there's enough money at stake. But for the moment, Brave's approach is a breath of fresh air, especially if we compare that to Chrome, which literally uses your browsing history to shape ad profiles across Google's entire ecosystem. It's also important to note that Brave has actually built a working business model around privacy. Brave ads are opt-in, local, private, and the browser matches you with ads without sending your data anywhere. That means advertisers can reach real people and users can earn basic attention tokens in return. This idea of decentralizing ad value was mocked early on, but it's now being used by major brands like Amazon and eBay. And, while the crypto side of Brave used to dominate the headlines, it's just one part of a larger privacy ecosystem that now contains a VPN, a wallet, a private search engine, and even an AI assistant. And, for the topic I'm sure we all love by now, like pretty much any other product these days, Brave AI is a big topic in the future of the browser. Its integrated AI assistant called Leo runs multiple models, including Claude, Llama and Ipsic, and users can connect their own local or remote models. The conversations aren't logged, shared or used for model training. On top of that, Brave is now developing agentic capabilities so that it can perform actions like drafting messages or booking things online on your behalf, but they're building it inside isolated browser profiles to prevent it from accessing other tabs or local data. In other words, they're designing AI agents with context isolation and explicit user consent. AI sales pitches aside, what I like most about Brave is that it is proving that building for privacy can actually make your software simpler. When you don't have to track users, sync behavior, or build profiles, your backend architecture gets leaner. Brave's technical choices from local ad matching to decentralized payments are forcing the web to confront a question we usually ignore. How much of what we build actually needs to exist? The 100 million users matter because they signal a shift in default expectations. Users no longer assume being tracked is the price of access, and developers no longer have to accept that privacy is a nice to have. Brave's growth shows that the so-called privacy tax is a myth and the product can be privacy first and still be profitable. Granted, the CEO might not afford a Gulfstream jet and the investors won't see the kind of margins you get from selling user data in bulk, but I think there is a lot to be proud of when you are not treating users like your personal cash cow. Brave is also a really interesting case study because it tackles the norm. 
Its growth has been fueled by a global awareness that Brave is an alternative to big tech and that users benefit greatly from a browser that preserves their privacy and is up to three times faster than competitors. So, when end users are given a choice, they actually exercise that choice and switch to new browsers. For example, daily installs for Brave on iOS in the EU went up 50% with the new browser choice panel following the implementation of the Digital Markets Act, which forced Apple to finally let users pick their default browser instead of pretending Safari was a universal preference. From a developer's point of view, the Digital Markets Act is one of the few regulatory moves that's actually working as intended because it is encouraging real competition at the software level. And Brave's 50% jump shows that when you stop locking users into your monopoly ecosystem, innovation comes back and we all can benefit from it. If you like this video, you should check out one of these next. Don't forget to like, subscribe and until next time, thank you for watching.